Booyah! Hello, good night, good morning, whatever it is that you are. Um, I'm Nine, welcome to the ACS. I am. Uh, I have already introduced the, the, the stream before. Uh, one of the players was slightly delayed, we knew this, so I was stalling a little bit. Anyway, guys, great to see you in chat. I'm really hyped up for this game between DIQ and Underscore. This is a loser's bracket semifinals. Once again, these players are fighting for $120. And uh, there will be an exhibition uh, match. There will be an exhibition match after the uh, Axe match. So you guys want to stick around to watch some Meepo Magic mirror match between Swellzong and uh, Underscore. But uh, in the meantime, uh, yeah, I think we're basically set up. Um, Underscore is having some slight difficulties, but uh, I'm sure we're going to work that out. In the meantime, I'm going to try to speak with these guys. Hello, hello. So, uh, are you having trouble with Artifact Man? Oh, it's fine. I, I now managed to log in. Sweet. Um, so, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you a, pl a, a player in the lobby because um, Baby's not here. And um, you there? Hello. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if you realize that you're muted, but otherwise it's maybe AFK. So, dude. Uh, people know you as a mono blue master. The IQ is obviously uh, a mono red master. So, what are you expecting from these games? Well, I think they are most known as like two most frequently strong players, right? <laughs> <laughs> At least among the good players. <laughs> so, yeah, I think whoever throws le less wins. I don't know. I think this time I should have a backup internet at least. To not, you know, not disconnect. Suddenly. Well, if there's going to be any issues, I'm sure we can we can solve it. But uh, yeah, let's hope there's no issues. Uh, yeah. So is that uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I assume DQ brings mono red because that's what he's known for yeah. mostly, or oh, mostly only. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> yeah. Have and, you uh, have you prepared uh, yeah, yeah, anything specifically for this match? I mean. In the last one, you were saying that you were uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, dice rolling and yeah, stuff. Yeah, sure. I, I planned to, but unfortunately, I'm now like the whole month is super busy at work and I have just no time to prioritize basically or to train any new stuff. So, uh, yeah, so I, I don't think I will do any surprise this much. All right. I am. Um, I plan to, but yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm basically kind of hoping just for the straight up uh, red versus blue classical match but hopefully so, we, yeah, we get five red games versus blue but... honestly goes quite i think it's quite a fun matchup and it's actually very often decided on you know men are like nine or ten yeah so it's kind of yeah i mean, I mean of course yeah it's, it's blue like okay you can occasionally get demolished earlier but that doesn't happen that often i would say mm -hmm. and if you don't get demolished then you're still in there most of the time uh, at least have some faster chance of like you know in the very worst case like ogre magic multicast <laughs> yeah sure well we'll see i mean oh, i really no. hope we don't see any of these games where the players get stuck with really high-end cards and can't do much but um i have to say also in my experience even having watched some of those games often it's possible to come back so uh we'll see we'll see what what happens yeah great so uh swell are you there man yes sweet um, underscore. So I think uh, we're good. The IQ hasn't registered his deck yet, but um, he apparently doesn't want to be interviewed on over on the Russian cast. Um, so I think we're just ready to go. If you're if you're good on your end, man. Yes, I'm good. I'm already re registered. Uh, so should we jump in between the games? Uh, if you if you want, I would love that. Um, so if you're okay. feeling like it, great. Just jump in after you after the game is over. Otherwise, if you don't want, just just write the word in chat to say if you don't feel like it. Okay, sure. Perfect. Uh, okay, then. Uh, have a nice cast. All right. You. Good luck. Good luck. All right, so I'm just going to push for DIQ to register his deck. I don't think he's uh, paying much attention at the moment. Let me just give me a second. Well, either that or undecided, but. Uh...
All right, wait a second. This baby is texting me now. I think you got the time. <laughs> I think you got the time zone right wrong. And he just wrote to me as well. I'll just tell him to join next game. Or wait, I don't. I cannot understand. It seems like he's on mobile, but. Mm, yeah, he didn't accept the invite, right? Can you still get him in, or? Yeah, I haven't locked it yet. Like he should be able to join from his mobile. As long as he gets the link. Okay, the accused registered his deck. I just so I just need baby to actually register. Okay, great, he's in. Nice. All right, so we're gonna close these invites. Just gonna check that the Russian guys are in. We're in for players. Great. Uh, Sweet. So we're off. Oh wait, I need to give underscore. I need to give underscore the win. Same for the IQ. Uh, yeah, sweet. All right, so mono blue against mono red. Well, hey, no, no surprises there. I wonder if. Um, <laughs> wait, isn't underscore generally on forty six cards? No, uh, I don't believe so. Oh, I wait. believe the standard mono blue deck right now is forty four cards. I have seen one at forty seven, but that's quite a while ago. Because so I normally play the underscore list, and he plays always conflagration. He's not on conflagration today. Uh, probably because he I knows guess he uh, the IQ. takes that out because of the IQ playing course, mono red, yeah. right? And what else? I should know this list. I've been playing it. He's got two years. sanctums, <laughs> two sanctums, oh. two diabolics, and he's got three arcanes because in his old list he had only two arcane assaults. Oh, okay. Yeah, so very slight. Oh, and he's playing fur line mantles instead of uh, cloaks. So, actually, I wonder if the IQ has done any changes to his own deck. Oh my god, the IQ's list, oh. on the other hand. He has teched so hard against Mono Blue, triple smash their defense. <laughs> That's amazing. And Vestures, man. Have you seen he's playing a Vestures? Yeah, I saw the Vesture too. All right, game slide. <laughs> nice. So I guess both players really knowing what their opponent, opponent is going to pick here and uh, preparing yeah. accordingly. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> I mean, I think neither the players, neither the casters, neither the spectators, no one expected anything else but this. So I think everyone's uh, everyone knows what they're in for. Yeah, well, uh, great flops for underscore. Luna lives and uh, Venomancer lives. And if he wants, he can even save Ogre as well, which he does go for. Yeah, the Vano living and the Luna living is just so important. And I mean, next round he doesn't care as much if the Ogre dies. Yeah, exactly. What do you think about saving the Ogre? You could have held on to that uh, compel to save Vano or Luna another turn eventually. I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it uh, because now he can place the Zeus and know, like, know for sure that the Zeus doesn't land in front of the... And it seems like he's going to do that. The Zeus will not uh, land mm, in front of the Bristol. Yeah. So you guarantee that. And then you also guarantee that you have a dead hero um, for, for, you know, just to keep yeah, cycling. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, not that I'm a mono blue expert, not at all, but I've been playing the deck the last few days because I wanted to... Uh, have a bit more insight into it and um, starting to get mm -hmm. the feel for these for these specific situations. Yeah, well, it definitely makes sense. So, uh, yeah, Hugh, Viscous, Nasal Gooing, Luna here. That's really nice. Going to make her an easy kill target throughout the game, which you obviously want. But, I mean, other than Nasal Goo, he doesn't really have <laughs> much to play here, especially since Underscore doesn't have an improvement in his hand. No. And on the other hand, Underscore having those dimensional portals is just... It's actually good on multiple levels, because the IQ stuck with a couple of Red Mist Pillagers, so the portal gives him less space for the Pillagers, 
And also, I feel personally that in this in this matchup, the blue blue has to have one lane where he is able to go wide and just deal natural damage to the tower. Because I feel the games where blue doesn't do natural damage to the tower are just way way harder in the red game. I mean, there's a few dynamics between red and blue that can play out in different ways. One of them is definitely blue being able to go wide early. That's one of the things red has very much trouble dealing with, especially if you have a hand like the IQ here, because, I mean, the only creeps you have are red mist pillagers, which you don't really want to trade them just into a melee creep or a hound of war, you know. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... Right now, he doesn't have any other options to to stop Underscore from going wide, so this is definitely one of the games where Blue can run away with the game. Yeah, he's, he's, he's managed to get a very decent board in lane 2 and 3. So, the IQ trying to get some damage control with the Tidehunter. And the Zeus yeah, is just... Yeah, the thing is, Tide is, Tide is really good at tanking one strong <laughs> unit, not multiple... Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. I feel like he's gonna have to use these red mist villagers just to trade for for creeps. Very honestly. Yeah, the IQ's hand is looking really rough here. I mean, two smash the defense. They are a great tech card against mono blue, but if mono blue doesn't draw any of their improvements, it turns out they just fill up your hand and you can't do anything. I mean, he has the option of killing the Luna here. It can actually deploy and swap but obviously you know the portal is gonna kind of screw that plan but yeah i mean at least he's gonna get the kill on the lunar right i think it's worth it but i mean red mist pillages are so awkward against blue i think since he teched so hard with the smashes i'm quite uh, surprised he didn't also take out the pillages because there's really no scenario in which you can get them to multiply against blue mm -hmm. and you could leave one for the threat i guess but yeah yeah, but even if the threat goes off, there's ignites, maybe there's conflagrations at any cost. There's so many ways to deal with it. Yeah. It kind of feels like uh, going up to maybe three brawlers would have been like uh, maybe a bit better. But he, I mean, oh, he's, he only he's runs the... two brawlers. I didn't even notice that. Yes, and like, I would just get rid of the pillagers and go with an additional brawler and spring mm. here, for instance. That yeah. would have been way better. I guess he's just afraid of the top end, top end uh, heavy hands, but. Who knows? Uh, maybe we can ask him after the after the games. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that being said, he does have a mercenary exile and triple smash, so shouldn't be too afraid of the top end unless he gets really unlucky. And actually, he has gotten really unlucky this game. <laughs> yeah. Has he, has he even played a card yet? Yeah, it, it's not looking good at all. Um, I mean, I mean lane I, three, I, he uh, underscore is just going to get down to twenty. It doesn't really matter much if he gets more or not, but the, the 20 is the, the magic number. And then mid is just keeping keeping on piling up the damage as yeah. well. Yeah, you're right. I mean, as as it's looking now, Underscore doesn't really need to do much more tower damage. And look at his hand, he's got all the control tools, double annihilation and triple eclipse. Oh, I gotta say, this is looking pretty bad for the IQ. But, um... We'll see. We'll see. I've seen I've seen Mono Red come back from from worse positions. It's possible, but I think if DIQ wants to come back here, he's going to have to get off times of triumph and get a good timing with the uh, Berserker's call or something, wiping out underscore in a lane and just locking locking him out of playing. And For the glory of Stonehall. And DIQ plays his first card on mana. No, he also played a pillager last turn, right? But second card on mana six. Yeah, and the, the other thing is that it just uh, when this happens, the worst part is that he's gonna draw those bronze legionnaires and those stone hall elites uh, at mana eight or whatever when he's expecting to draw TOTs. But... Yeah, I mean it would be something if you had all the other good cards lined up, right? But instead, you just stuck with double enough magic and double smash. And I have to say. I don't know how much uh, homework the IQ did, but uh, Underscore doesn't even... I mean, he's never played three Sanctums, as far as I'm aware. He always goes for the double, so you playing... Right. I don't know if he's overloaded this on the smashes. I guess you can kill the Ignites, right? But still. I mean, yeah, there's the Ignites as well. He does have five improvements. I think three 
smashes are fine. It's just <laughs> really awkward that he's drawn two and underscore hasn't drawn any of the improvements. Yeah. So we see the like DP. I, like at this point, uh, spot weaknesses would actually be better against mono blue even. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just dig a bit deeper, try to reach those TOTs or try to reach those critical dual timings. Anyway, as it stands, um, underscore TPing the Kana out. He doesn't want to lose two heroes in this lane at the same time. Uh, I mean, his tower is at 40. And he, okay, the IQ prevents a little bit of tower damage. So the thing is, it's probably he not going to be enough. But it but... does go down to 20. So one lane is taken care of, unless the IQ fishes out his Vesture of course. Sure. He still has the option of blocking with the standard bearer too, that would prevent uh, the tower from reaching 20. The thing is, how much do you really want to commit here? I mean, you, normally you want to commit for the aggressive stance and not to just prevent some damage. Yeah, I think committing the standard bearer here too is too much since you already have two heroes here. And I mean, you're going to go down to 20, but 20 or 22 underscore will be able to get that tower mm -hmm. at some point anyway, and you don't want to give him a too good annihilation at this point. The other thing I'll say is that, uh, well, underscore had initiative, you now just gave it back, but, um, oh. Oh, that hurts. Did not expect that one. I didn't, was not accounting for a possible eclipse. Eclipses were only on four charges. I didn't see that coming. But hey, that might just be a free tower. <laughs> Look at it. And and the fact that Underscore has so many creeps in all the lanes, it also just means that those Berserker calls are way less effective. Yeah, well, they're effective at killing creeps, I guess, but... Like I said, the IQ. He, I think he's gonna have to to top to get time of triumph for next turn somehow live and then be able to circus call and just almost one shot the towers because this game is very very rough for him. Yeah, uh, the IQ straight up abandons lane three. Um, let me just check. Underscore doesn't have any blinks or TPs anymore, but it's fine. I mean, he's happy with the with the with the Veno there. And once he gets to I mean, 9, he can even threaten Aethy, to be honest. The IQ does have two blinks, right? So maybe, maybe his logic is that he's so far behind that he has to get, like, a three-man time of triumph, maybe, and then try and blink out into the other lane. So, mm -hmm. But he does have Ogre coming back next turn, now Kana coming back the turn after that, so there will be the Annihilation threat every turn. You won't escape me. And still, mana seven, those smashes just sitting there. Damn. I mean, Underscore could not have drawn this up better if he wanted. No, he, he really does have the perfect hand, doesn't he? I mean, he doesn't have any portals or praise right now, but, but that's because he used them, right? Yeah. I think he's played all three portals. No, he, uh, he did, yeah, he but he moved to cast it one. Exactly. Well, um, there's still a possibility for TIQ to I blink over to lane 3 offering. and spring back to wherever he wishes. And the I Ravage is up as well, so high. that's actually a great placement for that um, for that uh, standard bearer. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Unfortunately, the IQ doesn't have any boots to replace that Tide Hunter for the Ravage. I thought I didn't realize he had a TP. Yeah, that's a really great blink. It's like he otherwise the IQ could have maybe dual Zeus and locked him out of this lane as well, so that Ogre would have to choose between lane one or two, but now underscore can still have heroes in every lane no matter. And I mean he blinks into lane three, but I just feel like it's a little too little too late. You've gotta get some damage through eventually, right? Oh, yeah. Um, He's skipping out on 8 damage there to block a Vino ward, I mean. And and really, even now with a TOT, this, oh, these towers are so healthy, it's going to take 2, maybe 3 hits to get them down. So, 
Oh. Underscore okay. just has so much underscore, uh, underscore doesn't have any items right now, and he puts the stone hall elite in front of a creep rather than killing Venomancer. I do not get that. Because Venom has the minus armor, right? So he could have put it in front of Venom. Sure, yeah. I wonder what the reasoning is for that. And he already killed Kana this turn, so yes. it can't be to try and, like, lock him out by killing all the heroes in the same turn. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so... So, yeah. The IQ is going to need to draw all of his top end from now on. I mean, we're going to need to see Spring the Traps, we're going to need to see TOTs, we're going to need to see some Primal Roaring action. He's going to have to um, have very dominant Ooh, plays from now on. One of them shows up. Okay. Um, he, his list also has three kind of matches. Yeah, but Underscore just straight up annihilates first. No dots. I mean, that does give the IQ the ability to TOT here, actually. And looking at Underscore's items, he knows that there's no blink and there's no TP, so yeah, just going for the TOT here. I'm not sure if this is great, though. He can Aghanims, he can double Eclipse. Well, realistically, you don't expect an Aghanims, because you've been sitting on two smashes the hmm. entire game. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been no Aghanims, right? Yeah, so you well... can't possibly know that he just topped it. <laughs> Well, they can't double eclipse. Uh, that was actually not true. Yeah, but, like, um... I still like the annihilation here because since underscore just annihilated lane one, that's I mean that's the reset there. So by TOTing here, you kind of make him want mm -hmm. to annihilate this as well. But if he does, I, it becomes without... really awkward. I, I I really think you don't. I he's he's hitting the tower for eight. So both players are hitting for eight. This is an even trade for underscore. And we're at eight mana, so like uh, we're around around uh, round five, so we're soon gonna be hitting that nine ten mana, and there's nothing that even with the vestures, what can the IQ do here? Yeah, I definitely agree that you don't uh, annihilate the middle there, but that's why it was such a great time to place um, to play. A lovely bottle. Because now with the Berserker's call in hand, you actually have the chance of killing him, killing uh, underscore in the middle and locking him. Not with the current hero positioning, though. And Underscore doesn't care about initiative. He's going to have lane 1 free for himself. So he can... Well, uh, scratch that. The IQ does have more blinks in hand. So if he wants, he can blink back to lane 1. But um, if he doesn't, though, Underscore is going to have free lane 1 with Um yeah. And and if if the IQ does blink, then there's there's just initiative on underscore side. So nothing is quite so far. Yeah, now you can't kill Venom, right? You had to do it the last turn when there was no item. Oh, that comes back to bite him hard. It's turn eight, and I don't think this has this Venom answer died once. I guess it has, because it has. Four I think health. once, yeah. But uh, otherwise, he's been just having the time of his life. Now, I don't know what this with this with this tide hunter is doing here. I think he needs to blink it out. You ha you cannot just give a free lane with Salamanes. Okay, it's a not it's not a nogger, but still like. Looking at uh, Underscore's hand right now, Salamania doesn't actually do very much. Because no, he, only he needs card to hit some card draw. Yeah. Assault, I'll so. go where I but I think you deploy it anyway. You know? right. He goes to contest. I don't know. I think the IQ missed an opportunity in the middle with uh, blinking one of his TOT heroes to lane 3 or lane 1, because if he had done that, the lane would have collapsed so that the other hero would have been able to Berserker's Call and kill both opposing heroes in the following turn. Oh, yeah. But right now, there's no way DIQ can lock out Underscore in the middle with just one spell. Well, enough magic, I guess, but that's a bit different. I mean, Underscore's lowest tower is 32. Man. Oh, double Kraken Shell. <laughs> Um, Don't count him out just yet. He does need initiative to play the bold as well, right? Yeah. There, so there is no, there is no uh, Jaspers for underscore. So the Ravage will keep the Kana locked. 
There's also the enough magics, obviously. But... It will, and you can take the Kraken shell for the initiative in the middle. I assume that he's just going to pop enough magic in the middle this turn. Yeah, it would actually be a great enough magic, right? And the next turn, he's going to try and get the initiative and duel down the ogre. Oh. But what about the other lanes? I was going to say, underscore, I, I wonder if this is a bit of a slight misplay, because he doesn't have a second one, and there's no heroes on the third lane, so he could have also kept the Salamanis for lane three, but obviously he knows that the IQ has blinks in hand. That's quite clear for him, so. You die, oh my god. Ooh, so this fades the IQ into playing the enough magic. He's so scared of the Salamani that he gives underscore the ability to annihilate the middle. This was... Oh, this was such a bait and the IQ took it hook, line, and sink him. Uh, these are the small mind games. Well, small. These are the huge mind games that are important in this matchup, really. I feel like this, this, must, this was a key moment in the game. Definitely stay on the field <laughs> prevented the middle from dying for a couple of turns. Alright, so um, I feel like it's time to use that Eclipse, bro. I mean, the tower's going down, but still. Nah, there's no reason to use the Eclipse here. You're taking the tower and there's just a few creeps. It feels to me like the game's gonna end, most likely. And I don't think it's gonna have the possibility to use both of those eclipses. <laughs> well, in that case... Because think about it like this, if he has the possibility to use eclipses, then he's just gonna bolt in mid, right? So does he, does he want to eclipse lane one? Well, but yeah. I mean, just because you are not going to use them, but still win the game, doesn't mean that you should use them now. No, that is true. Like something might go wrong. This tower is at forty. Okay, yeah, that's fine. There are two kraken shells. I mean, it doesn't take initiative back. That also surprises me. There's the rest here, but that's a little too late. No mind. Um, just, uh, so Eclipse, seven charges, uh, one, two, three, plus four, so that's perfect lethal. First lane. Does he get another Jaspers? Might not even need to, uh, oh, double bolt, he's won the game. He just kills the <laughs> first lane here. Well, he's definitely he gonna get Ravage, initiative. and he cannot, he doesn't have Jaspers to get out of it. So he's all oh, right. My bad. My bad. I yeah. have the initiative. And wrong. then in mid, um, he's just able I to kill the other side. I thought underscore would have taken initiative with arcane assault from lane three. That's that's exactly. Why. Oh, why? I'm also a bit surprised because the, the eclipse would have been lethal. But I guess he was expecting one of the heroes to deploy into lane one, and then it would have done nothing. But I I wonder if that was a misplay. Well. It all depends on the line of play that the players are expecting, right? So. Yeah, I mean, other score has some uh, some room for misplays at the moment. Yeah, but um, even even with the IQ dominating this this complete round, <laughs> this goes with the straight up bolt. Yeah, oh, I like this because now he's gonna have to stun him just to stop a potential second bolt, and if he does, he also needs to stop one in the middle. I mean, he can live one more turn, but not much more than that, I think. The D protects me. So, plenty of options here. Yeah, the Sega's call kills him, but he's only yeah. pushing 12 damage now. This allows now, at least if... to use the smash. <laughs> yeah, but this could have been with uh, Bristle and uh, Beastmaster in the... Yeah. I lead yeah. by example. Oh, that he doesn't even really cycle the smash! What? Oh, what? No, that is straight up a misplay. Sweet, sweet yeah, definitely. 
straight up 100 percent like, misplay. I know, like I know you've had these in your hand for ten turns, but I mean, don't grow that attached. I will say though that underscore hasn't seen much in the way of card draw, but um, with Diabolic and double cunning plan, now he can. But he's not even gonna need it. Now, so. It seems like he's gonna lose initiative again. So. Well, I think uh, the IQ will definitely. Okay, yeah. Well, he's got two Kraken shells to try and get initiative. He can't keep up this initiative game forever. Well, he can just duel and Kraken if he wants to just make sure. Could also Primal yeah, that's and true. Kraken. And then he has to enough magic lane one because Underscore can put people there, so Primal War won't be. Still, I think this is normally where you see Mono Red winning the game, and just he lacked so much on early damage that <laughs> despite dominating the whole round, the lowest tower is at 24, and it's absurd. Just completely absurd. Yeah. He's looking at that Vestures and thinking, should I get rid of this for the next match? <laughs> All right, so there's a Kana and a Luna to kill. Oh, wow. If, Triple deploy lane one. If, Why? if he straight up enough magics, he's lost in mid. Yeah, that's true, I guess. He <laughs> he needed Bristleback to land in a great spot. Looks and like tough a checkmate to me, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he did get the call. One spot, he was one spot from uh, being able to call them. All right. So if he doesn't misclick the cards, I think the game's over. There we go. GG. 1-0 on the score. Very dominating game. Yo, what's up? Hey, hey. Um, hey, what's up, man? Uh, great game, very dominating performance. <laughs> if, if, yeah, you know. well, I mean, I just multicasted the team portal, right? <laughs> and I like, got the prey. Although, to be fair, I never got any card draw before turn. Yeah. Yeah, Nine. We, we saw. Oh, that. Eight. Yeah, we saw that. Except for one compel, which is actually very good. I, I will turn. say though that the IQ's hand was just absolutely horrible. He had double smash, and double pillager, and he just couldn't. He just couldn't do anything because he didn't have any improvements either. Oh, I mean, he played pillager. So, I mean, okay, I got unlucky to not get any improvement, but then it turned out I got lucky, right? Because he got stuck with smashes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He had two smashes the entire game. Okay. Um, wanted Sorry. to ask you a question. There was there there was a um, there's a, a turn where you could have taken initiative to then try to eclipse in lane one. You had the Kana in lane one, and he had the Tithe, and there were two heroes coming in from his side. I, I didn't know he would double. It only makes sense if he double deploys lane two, mm. which I don't think he will do exactly. if he takes initiative. Yeah, and I right just thought that uh, like I thought that I already have a strong advantage, and I have at least I had already one bolt in hand. So I might just, you know, have ended the game on that turn. On the next turn, I mean, like with the bot second lane, and for that I might need an initiative card, I only had one. Mm -hmm. And I, I generally felt like kind of like I'm in a quite good position, and like the play is not even obviously generates value, because my Kana cannot be killed, like, immediately. It can be stunned, but not killed. And so I just felt like I'm already... Will at the very worst, he will stun me and he will need to have initiative to use initiative cards, and then he will clear me second lane. But then he will have need to another to do another initiative cards anyways later. And I just thought uh, that it's like uh, it's kind of would be even more uh, you know usage of initiative. Sure. And I already have at that turn. I think I already had most of my cards that I needed. I had already bought in hand, so I didn't need to like hard card draw for that. My thinking, although uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how correct that. I feel like generally I'm a bit too shy on using the initiative, mm -hmm. and I feel like sometimes you, it's uh, not. I actually noticed that I've been playing with your uh, one of your old lists where you had the conflagration and uh, double sanctum, double arcane, um, and mm -hmm. um, you you did some changes. Oh, well, it was not double it was double arcane in any list. Okay. Uh, do you right. do you uh, did you see the IQs? I'm sure you saw the IQs uh, deck changes. What do you think of those, and uh, and how do you think the changes that you did um, affect the match? So, like, I see his idea, and 
I think his point is that okay, if he, you know, if his early mid game goes well, then he gets enough money for everything, and then it will be hard for me to finish the game. So I see that point. Um, I, I'm not sure what to think. It's actually I, I thought I never didn't think he would do that at all. Now yeah. thinking, it actually makes perfect sense at least logically. I mean, I'm not sure whether it's a good or not tech, but at least it's kind of logical way of thinking. Right. Yeah. So well, uh... I know, and it could also block. So it's hard for me to to evaluate now on on the fly. Sure. Yeah, don't uh, don't wreck your brain too much. <laughs> I think yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll call it quits for now. And um, yeah, you have uh, three minutes. Actually, the IQ is already registered. Actually, but um, yeah, good luck for the next game. Sure.